It is my pleasure to announce the talk by Matti Jarvinen. I think my Finnish pronunciation is okay. <laughs> geographic, no, he will tell no, us no. about geographic dense QCD in neutron stars. Please, 45 minutes. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, so the plan of, is to give sort of an, uh, a review or bias review talk on this topic, holographic dense QCD and neutron stars. And okay. So the outline of the talk is that I will first start by an introdu introduction and motivation to the topic. Then I will discuss holographic models for QCD, so and in particular for quark matter in QCD, dense quark matter. And this is this talk will be mostly review, biased review, and then I will go on to discussing nuclear matter, holographic nuclear matter, and uh, what I call the hybrid equation of state in the third part of the talk. And in the last part, I will discuss the uh, mergers of neutron stars by using input from hol holographic. And the last two sections are mostly just by, uh, like, work by me and my collaborators. But, anyways, so I will start by introduction and motivation to the topic. So, computing theoretical prediction for QCD is uh, particularly hard at intermediate densities and small temperatures. So, mm, um, so what, what the, the regions which I'm talking about are like around here and why is this difficult? Well, there are, there are lots of tools available, but they, are, they do not apply in this region. In particular, there is lattice QCD results uh, at small chemical potentials and then perturbative QCD works uh, well at asymptotically high densities and chemical potentials. And also there's effective field theory, which works at, uh, well, maybe in this region up to like small densities of nuclear matter. But there is a lot of region which is not covered by this, these approaches. And this is not just purely academic question to, to, to study this, this region. Well, there are phase transitions and in particular, the cores of massive neutron stars are expected to lie in this region where there are large uncertainties. And uh, the uncertainties are also shown on this right hand plot, where I saw what is known just purely based on theory about the equation of state at the moment. Oh, by the way, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. So, in this plot, the, on the Left hand side, you see the effective field theory or what is known based on effective field theory at low densities and at very high densities, there is uh, some knowledge of perturbative QCD. But in the middle, there is a large gap where theoretical predictions are essentially missing. And in this gap, it, it is where, where the central densities of massive, massive neutron stars expect, are expected to lie. And it's important to improve the theoretical predictions in this region because there is lots of incoming data from experiments uh, of related to neutron star coming in near in near future. I will discuss this data in a little bit more detail. Well, I discuss some like very basic stuff about neutron stars. So neutron stars are essentially lumps of extremely dense cold QCD matter. Well, they are like they have high temperatures, but they, compared to QCD scales, the temperatures are low. So we can treat them as cold matter in QCD. And you can just consider uh, like spherical symmetric configuration in GR and solve the GR corresponding GR equations. So the Tolman Oberheimer bulk of equations, which map the equation of state to a mass radius relation of the neutron star. Uh, that, but this means that because there is lots of uncertainty in the equation of state, basically there is uncertainty in the mass radius relation and in particular you don't even know what is the composition of the neutron stars at the, this inner core of them. But because of this relation you can also constrain the equation of state by measuring the masses of, and radii of neutron stars. And so I, I'm here uh, summarizing the current status 
uh, the mass, there is lots of mass measurements, means dozens of results using various me methods. But the most important res results are those which have the highest masses. And the highest reliably measured masses are, have been obtained by so-called Shapiro delay me measurements of uh, neutron star white dwarf binaries. And this sets a, a rather tight bound on the maximum mass of the neutron star. So whatever the equation of state is, it needs to be able to support uh, neutron stars of uh, at least or around uh, masses of two times the solar mass. The radius me measurements are more challenging and they have higher uncertainty. Among, among other things, there are uh, measurements which use the uh, X-ray bursts coming from neutron star. So you have some companion of, of the neutron star with very which inject matters into the star, which causes uh, nuclear reactions. And if you model the cooling after these bursts, you can estimate the radius of the star. And you, the results are vary uh, between 10 and 15 kilometers. Some measurements even uh, claim like quite small error bars around one kilometer, but uh, uh, model dependence is quite large. But it, all of this is expected to get get better in near future. So there, there is more measurements coming and the, the results are getting better. For example, there is a nicer experiment which has been just, just started. There is already some data coming which me measures the uh, X-rays of neutron star. And it's expected to improve the measurements of radio. But apart from just uh, measuring um, individual neutron stars, there is also data coming from neutron star mergers. So you probably know that there has been one element observed gravitational radiations, and they also keep uh, information on the properties of dense matter by observing the gravitational waves and the electromagnetic signal coming from the merger. And they are like the likely origin of short gamma ray bursts and uh, the heaviest elements in the in the universe. And here I have a sketch of uh, what happens as a function of the mass of the neutron stars in these mergers. So very high mass mergers just collapse immediately into a black hole. And in this case, you have get a very simple uh, mm, uh, gravitational wave signal. And, but uh, at a little bit lower mass, you first create a hypermassive neutron star, which then after a while um, collapses into a black hole. And it, at even lower, uh, lower masses, you first create this hypermassive neutron star or supermassive neutron star, which then, then uh, relaxes into a um, like, uniformly ro rotating star, which may or may not co collapse at a much longer time scale to a black hole. Actually, these, uh, these different signals from gravitational waves, these are actually from, <laughs> from the uh, simulation which we did ourselves. We, I will show you that later. And as I said, there is already one event of neutron star merger which has been observed. And they, they observe this in spiral phase gravitational signal. So I'm showing here actually there on the right hand side the raw data from the experiment. So you can see, you see here the signal. And this sets an upper bound to a parameter which is called the tidal deformability. And this, this uh, parameter measures how much the neutron stars uh, deform in the inspiral phase are under the like a very strong gravitational field. And this, on the other hand, gives a rough upper bound for neutron star radius. So what I'm showing here is a, a like a, um, it's a, the like a result for the mass radius of relation for the observed, in the observed merger for the neutron stars, which are of roughly of the same mass and essentially well, the upper cutoff is somewhere a bit, little bit around, or a little bit about 13 kilometers. And I should stress that LIGO is at the moment running at much uh, higher sensitivity than it was when it was observing this event. 
So if there is a similar event in near future, we will be able to get much better uh, signal and much better constraints for the equation of state. And then I will discuss what is the status of the equation of state if you take into account this uh, already known constraints uh, from neutron star observations. So what I'm uh, plotting here is uh, pr the plot is from this paper. So this is basically the state of the art, what is known about the equation of state in QCD. So I'm here, I'm plotting again the log of the energy density and the logarithm of the pressure. And what these people did, they did this uh, like polytropic interpolation of the equation of state between the nucle known nuclear matter equation of state and known the QCD equation of state. And if you just impose a um, physical constraint like reasonable speed of sound, you get a band of e equation of state which is allowed. But then you can apply this astrophysical bound. First, if you apply the bound from the maximum mass, that it must be at least around uh, two times the solar mass, this excludes the cyan area in this band of equation of state. And then on top of that, you can uh, apply the bound from the LIGO uh, observation of neutron star merger. So they, this is the upper bound for the tidal deformability. And this excludes the red area. And actually, um, it includes a little bit more than the red area because this uh, plot assumes a result from LIGO, which uh, has been a little bit refined after a more careful analysis. So actually, it, uh, it excludes also like roughly half of this. Uh, violet area as well. But okay, well, the topic of my, the rest of my talk is what you can do about the uncertainty by using holograms. Because certainly there is, uh, uh, I mean, there, there is cert certainly need to improve the theoretical prediction because there are these experimental results coming. And these large uncertainties in the theoretical situation are because this is a genuinely strongly coupled region of QCD where you try to make prediction. And because holography has a strong, strong coupled method, you expect that maybe you can do something with holography to reduce the uncertainties in the equation of state and then compute other observations also. So I will go to the second part of the talk. So the holographic models for dense QCD, in particular uh, for dense quark matter in QCD. And I will, oops, I think I need to wait a bit. Uh, yeah, so I will start by discussing uh, results in top-down approach. First, um, I will discuss results uh, in a D3D7 system actually from this paper, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, so they, as said, they used a probe D3D7 system, which actually, turned, as it turns out, when you also turn on a, a finite hard fork mass, it tries to, to a very simple equation of state. So this means that you are considering N equals four super young wheels with some uh, probe fundamental matter. And what they did is that they took the fork matter equation of state from this model, so that's by giving this formula, and combined this with a known, um, uh, known model equations of state from like traditional effective field theory nuclear matter. So they considered actually three different nuclear matter models. And here on the left hand plot, I'm showing the uh, result in equation of state. So the black curve is the result from the holographic model and these uh, colorful curves are the equations of state from the three different nuclear matter models. And what you do is that at some point the curves intersect and you interpret this as the point of the phase transition. So at low densities, you will use the um, nuclear matter model and then at high densities, you will use the um, equation of state from the uh, holographic model. And if you just plug this into the DOV equations, you get mass radius curves like what I saw in the right hand plot. 
So this so the radii of the neutron star masses um, as a function of mass or the other way around <laughs> um, for these three different constructions, three different nuclear matter states. And these colorful curves are uh, co colorful curves are stars which only include nuclear matter, so no holography at all. But if you go to very high masses, you encounter stars, which, which are these black curves here, which also have a quark matter core coming from the nuclear, coming from the holographic model. Uh, but as it turns, well, one thing which you can see is that the first order nuclear to quark matter, when you match these models, turns out to be very strong. And because of this, these black, uh, these neutron stars with the holographic quark matter core, which are given these black curves in the figure, turn out to be unstable. And this study, oops, this study has been extended to, well, we, there, there's a simple extension where you can just essentially vary the quark mass. And by doing this, you can get uh, quark stars and hybrid stars. So by varying this parameter, you can get the mass, different mass radius curves, which I saw on the left hand side. And this may look quite exotic because some of these um, stars have very large radii, but they don't, they are not in conflict with any obvious uh, experimental constraint. And uh, um, and another comment is that because of these configurations which they obtained in these models are quite exotic, there is also sizable deviations from some universal relations, in particular this I love Q relations which have been studied in this paper. And um, okay, here the I is the, uh, it's the moment of inertia, inertia, I think, of the neutron star. The lab is the, is there essentially the deformability parameter and Q is the quadruple moment of the neutron star. Uh, th these are useful relations to compute the properties of neutron star, neutron star merger. So they, therefore they, <laughs> I mean the universal properties are useful. So therefore it's in interesting if you get deviation. But there, there has been also a different kind of follow up by a, a group in Southampton where they included effects of running of the quark mass or, or running of the, as a non-trivial animal dimension for the quark mass and the quark condensate. And by doing this, they obtained a stiffer equation of state for the quark matter, which may be interesting because this hints that if you get a stiffer equation of state or higher, which this means that you have higher speed of sound, you might have, it might be more probable that you get a, a stable stars with the quark matter cores. And actually they obtained uh, hints of having a, a quark matter cores in their system, but they were in this, uh, this so-called twin stars, which are like a, are a separate branch of solutions. And I won't go to any detail, but they also like quark stars have been studied in Witten, Sakai, Sukimoto, and in Duke for G6 models in this paper, which I mentioned here. But now I will switch to a slightly different topic and discuss like a recent progress in uh, bottom up models. Uh, but so modeling bottom up, uh, modeling uh, dense QCD by using bottom up models. And in particular, I'm discussing this VQCD model, which I've been using quite a lot in the rest of the talk. So it's a holographic bottom up model for QCD at the Venetiano limit. So in the Venetiano limit, you take the number of flavors and the number of colors in QCD to be large, keeping this ratio n over n c fixed. And it's a bottom-up model, but you are trying to follow principles from string theory as closely as possible. So it's a more complicated than like very simple bottom-up model, which you often see in the literature. And so there is lots of parameters. It should be understood as an effective description of QCD. And to fix these parameters, it's essential to compare with QCD data. And I would say that it's one of the most realistic holographic models of, for QCD available. And as it turns out, I will show you examples. This also works surprisingly well to describe the dense, dense QCD matter. And a little bit more detail, the model is obtained by fusing together two building blocks 
the first building block is the in, so-called input holographic QGD model, which is the model for youngness theory inspired by string theory. So it's defined in terms of five-dimensional Dilaton gravity. And the second building block is how you add flavor and color symmetry breaking. This kind of setup you do it by adding a space filling brain, uh, brain pairs to you know, write down this tachyonic brain action. And in the Venetian limit, the two sectors are fully back reacted. But as I said, I won't go, give you any, okay, I won't give you any details about this model or very specific details, but it, it's the point is that it's essential to com first compare these models to QCD data. And therefore, I first, I look at the models in the parameter region where QCD lattice data exist. So that's the region of um, low densities. And well, first of all, much of the parameters of the model are already fixed by requiring that the behavior of this, the model is uh, qu quantitatively similar to QCD. But the remaining parameters are fitted to lattice data. And I should, I've shown here some of the fit results. And I, before discussing them in any detail, I stress that the fit is stiff. So the parameter dependence is quite mild, assuming that you don't put anything like crazy behavior in the model. And that's why it's actually highly non trivial that you get a good description of the lattice data. And so here I'm plotting or the plot show um, the fit result first for the interaction measure, which is the energy density minus three times pressure normalized to the fourth power of the temperature. This is shown as a function of the temperature and the red dots and error bars are lattice data. And these blue curves are different fits by using the holographic model. So actually we have, we have like different sets of parameters which we will be using. And we also, well, you can also compute this barrier number susceptibility. It's the second derivative of pressure um, with respect to chemical potential at zero chemical potential. So this gets you a little bit of feeling on how the equation of state will vary as you go to, uh, from zero density to finite density. And it's also possible to fit this very nicely with, with the holographic model. And then after you have fitted the, the parameters of the model at uh, small densities, you can have a, a check what is the prediction at finite density. And it, as it turns out, this works quite nicely. So what I'm showing here in the, in the plot, so these various uh, blue and green curves here, they are the results from the holographic model. And there is a, quite a bit of spread, even though I, I'm not fixing any of the parameters of the model in particular in such a way that I would get this result. Uh, the, all the parameters were purely fitted by requiring agreement with lattice. And I'm comparing this result from the holographic model to this all interpolated equation of state between nuclear matter and perturbative QCD, which are given by the gray band, and also to some of the nuclear matter models, which are given by this red, orange, and green, green curve. And what you can observe immediately is that the holographic curves for the equation of state do not intersect with these nuclear matter models. This means that at some point there must be a phase transition at constant pressure from the nuclear matter models to the, the holographic equation of state. You can actually check it explicitly. And I won't show you the result of like matching the nuclear matter model with holographic QCD in this case, I, we, we have done it and you get very similar results as in this simple G3D7 model. In particular, you have very strong, strong first order transitions and you don't get any stable quark matter cores in your neutron cell. And this is in some contrast to some studies in Witten Sakai Sukimoto model where you actually typically have uh, quite smooth transitions from nuclear matter to quark matter whenever the transition is present. And I should mention that this uh, idea of uh, like fitting the model to lattice data at small densities and then extrapolating is similar in spirit to what, what has, has been done in order to study the uh, critical point in the QCD phase diagram as a function of uh, 
uh, chemical potential and temperature. So there are papers which are doing a little bit similar stuff, but uh, they are concentrating on the physics of the critical point. But, uh, um, okay, so what I was showing on, on the, this slide was just, was, just, was just the equation of state of cold QCD. But from the holographic model, you also get uh, with the full temperature dependent equation of state for quark matter. And in this paper, uh, it, this, these temperature dependent uh, equations of state with like various choices of parameters in the holographic model were com combined with um, the few uh, nuclear matter models which uh, on the, are available on the market which include temperature dependent. And by this way, you could, uh, by combining, com combining holographic prediction with the nuclear matter models, you could construct a reasonable equation of state at all chemical potentials and temperatures in the relevant region for neutron star, neutron star merger. And well, on, the, on this right hand plot, I saw the uh, critical transition, first order transition line for these various, various uh, uh, models obtained by combi combination of the, of this. The, these frameworks. And on the right hand plot, I'm showing you the latent heat as a function of temperature. And you see that, well, the, at zero temperature, the latent heat is at most 700 MeV over Fermi cube. This is actually a very large number, but as the temperature increases, the latent heat, latent heat goes down. So the, the transition is very strong at low temperatures, but when you go higher up, it uh, gets uh, uh, weaker. But let me go on to the next topic. So discussing ho holographic dense nuclear matter and this so-called, what I call the hybrid equations of state. And well, nuclear matter in holographic models, well, the basic idea to do nuclear matter is that each, uh, each baryon in the nuclear matter should map to a solitonic instant of configurations of gauge, gauge fields in the past. And this has been studied a lot in the Witten Sakai Sugimoto model. So there's lots of literature. You can get a like rough, reasonable model for physics of QCD at finite density. You have uh, actually these baryons form uh, these solitonic cr crystals with uh, some non trivial transitions transition structure and it's also there are hints that you can also get something like a partionic basis which is a space expected in large QCD in this region, the relevant region. And these solutions have been also constructed and studied in hardball, hardball models. But in this, there, in the rest of the talk, where what I will discuss will not be based on the instanton, but it's be based on sort of the smeared instanton configuration. So I will be using a simple approximation scheme where I just take an NF equals two flavors and approximate this nuclear matter as a homogeneous configuration. So this has been studied uh, previously in the context of Witten Sakai Tsukimoto model in these papers, which are listed here. And we did this in the context of, of uh, VQCD. And I won't, give you any uh, computational details, but I will directly jump to the, the results. So the phase diagram which you obtain uh, at zero quark mass looks like this. So it's the, the figure plot in this, on this slide. Here the green area is a confined phase. So this phase has just trivial thermodynamics and in the large C limit. And the red area is the deconfined quark matter phase of VQCD, which I discussed in the uh, previous section of my talk. But when you, you consider the possibility of having the nuclear matter, as it turns out, there's an instability of creating nuclear matter in this uh, intermediate region here. So here is this nuclear, you obtain this nuclear matter phase, this homogeneous and non abelian bulk configuration. It, and it appears in the, exactly in the region of the phase diagram which you would expect. 
And you also observe that there is a non-trivial first order phase transition from nuclear matter to quark matter phase here. So actually you get a description of the nuclear matter and the quark matter from the same model. This is highly non-trivial in particular, you get the description of the, of the phase transition and interface here. And then you can go on and study the equation of state for like cold matter in this area. So you go to low temperatures and study what happens as, a, as you vary the chemical potential. And this is what I'm showing here is the, the speed of sound, which uh, probes the, in the smaller proton, I'm showing the speed of sound as a function of chemical potential. And the speed of sound probes sensitively the behavior of the, of the equation of state. And what you observe is that, well, at, from, for chemical potential from 300 MeV to a little bit over 400 MeV. So in this regime, this is the result for the nuclear matter in DQCD. And the speed of sound increases quite steeply with chemical potential. In particular, it exceeds this value of one over three, which is the con so-called control bound. But you, as is obvious, the model doesn't care about the bound, it just exceeds the the value very clearly. And then in the quark matter phase, the, there is a very strong first order phase transition to quark matter phase with speed of sound jumps. And in the, in the quark phase, it's mostly below actually the conformal value. And I should say that, well, first of all, this is, um, th this, this makes it much easier to, to alleviate the, this astrophysical bound. So the, bound of the maximum mass of the neutron star and the bound for the tidal deformability of the, of the neutron star. And I should also comment that um, by using completely different methods, a uh, stiff nu nuclear matter equation of state has also been obtained in, in the witten sakai sukimoto model. But um, I won't be using this result directly to describe uh, new, neutron stars. And this is because actually the VQCD result is not reliable at uh, lo low densities from nuclear matter because that's uh, the like perturbative weakly coupled region. And, but this is not a problem because we know what happens in the, in the low density region. Uh, so there are lots of nuclear matter models which are reliable in this region. So because of this, what we do is that we combine the, these nuclear matter models with the prediction from holograms. So we take se actually several nuclear models at low densities and match them with VQCD at high densities. And as I said on the previous slide, these hybrids are viable, so they will pass all the astrophysical con constraints and it's easy because of the stiffness of the VQCD equation of state. And as I already stressed, the, you get the same holographic model for nuclear and quark matter phases. So the peak low density nuclear matter is given by the uh, traditional nuclear matter model, but everything else, including dense nuclear matter and dense quark matter is given by the holographic model. And what we then do is that we construct sort of all possible hybrid equation of state. So we take a carefully selected uh, select, uh, set of nuclear matter models um, we have different models with variance stiffness, and we then we choose different parameter sets for the holographic model, and we also vary the density where you match between the nuclear matter and the holographic model. So the matching density is somewhere around two times the nuclear saturation density. And then we study what you can get or what is the remaining freedom if you allow all these parameters to vary? And the results are shown on this slide. So I'm he here on the right hand side, I'm showing the, uh, the e results for the equation of state. So the red band is all the equation of state of band by this hybrid equation of state and it's compared to this light blue band, which are the interpolated equations of state. And uh, both of these sets, sets uh, pass the astrophysical constraints. So therefore the, uh, the difference is, is what is the, the constraint given by holograph essentially. 
and you see that well in, at low densities this um, here maybe it's not very easy to see from the plot but the, the results dis disfavor stiff models of nuclear matter and here maybe at the intermediate densities on the other hand there is a region of uh, uh, equation of state or which is excluded. These are uh, like soft models for nuclear matter. These are excluded in this region. And also at high densities, the model is very constrained because of the uh, very constrained uh, quark matter equation of state in the model. And here on the left hand side, I'm showing the mass radius, uh, or sorry, on the right hand side, I'm showing the mass radius curve coming from this hybrid equation of state. And it, also here, the, the band that this light red band spanned by the hybrid equation of state is considerably um, narrower than the interpolated equations of state. And high uh, fork mass, high radii of, nu of neutron stars are preferred. And I'm here, so at least 11 kilometers and actually like mo the most natural equation of state are in this regime which are like close to 12 or even 13 kilometers and i'm comparing the model you know, maybe i should clean up the, the to this uh, well i'm comparing the model of the, also these test curves which are the direct measurements of radii and masses from uh, well these, these ellipses are coming from nicer experiments and the others are measurements of x-ray curves so there is also a good agreement with this this experiment but okay let me then go to the last topic of my my talk which is the mer mergers of holographic neutron stars and uh, well before i go to the details i want to show you uh, show you a video so let me try how this how this works. So can you see it? Yes. So I'm I'm running it now. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how well it updates, but this is showing the a merger of two neutron stars which have both masses of 1.5 times the solar mass. And you say on the on the top you see actually the time evolving and it's in milliseconds. So all of this is actually happening very fast. But the color so the density or the logarithm of the, the density of matter. And in this case, what happens is that the, after the merger, the system immediately collapses into a black hole. Okay, let me go back to the presentation. Okay, so here you see that on this slide, the steels from the same simulation, which I just showed you. And uh, in order to do this, we used um, one of the hybrid equation of state, which we constructed by using this Sly equation of state and uh, VQCD as input. So the Sly is one of the traditional nuclear matter models. And we have to evolve the four dimensional general relative this relativistic hydrodynamics equation. So we use some uh, software packages avail publicly available. The Lorentz code for initial condition, Einstein toolkit for the general relativity part, and this Swiss VHC code for the hydrodynamics. And this is uh, computationally heavy. So to do the simulation, you need supercomputing. And we have this pilot project on that supercomputer called Testi. And in particular, we thank Helvi Vitek for help with the Einstein toolkit and Elias Moskvik also with the help with the coding, in particular with the Vitsky VHC code. And I'm showing here some of the basic results for the power spectral densities. So at high mass, the system immediately, as I showed in the, uh, in the movie, collapses into a black hole. And uh, this collapse is, is actually, at, as it turns out, is induced by a transition to quark matter. So if you recall, there was a very strong first order phase transition. Whenever you reach the phase of 
phase transition inside the system, it immediately collapses to a black hole. But so this doesn't give a very interesting uh, gravitational wave signal, so they collapse to a black hole. But at lower mass, the remnant is a, is a hypermassive neutron star. And in this case, you get a, an interesting power spectral density of the produced gravitational wave, which carries the imprint of the equation of state. So here I'm so, so in the like the strength of the gravitational wave signal as a function of the frequency for three different si simulations at the, uh, for neutron stars with mass 1.3 times the solar mass. So the green curve is, is the pure slide equation of state, and the the red and blue curves are two different equation of states from the holo holographic model. And the, there is a tendency that this peak frequency of the after merger signal F2, so which is, for example, here for the blue curve, is is shifted to lower frequencies for the holographic model. So the holographic model uh, prefer low low frequencies for the highest uh, after merger uh, frequency. And I, I would say that this uh, red uh, gray curve here is the uh, is the sensitivity or current sensitivity of LIGO. So actually, when the, when the first merger was observed, this curve the sensitivity was worse than this. And the signal which I'm showing this is assuming the distance uh, to the neutron star merger, which was is the same as this event which was already observed. So if this event appears again and it has a, around the co correct uh, masses in the correct pole part the signal will be, will be of this in particular this f2 peak will be visible at light this, this can be used to rule out actually our holographic model and at the last slide which i'm going to show are the density distributions so this is actually uh, for a simulation of mass equals uh, 1.4 times the solar mass where you first create a hypermassive neutron star, which then later collapses into a black hole. So these negative times, so the green and cyan curves are the mass distribution or the density, the distribution of dense, different densities in the system uh, before the merger. So then you just have the profile of the, well, this uh, dip, slightly deformed neutron star. In particular, the maximum maximum density is here and it's relatively slow. But then as the, these three different, these blue magenta and red curves are after the merger. And you see that the distribution gets, gets uh, this high tail, high tail, tail peak. So there, after the merger, you have much more massive star. And so you broke the high density region. And there is also this low density peak here which uh, describes the matter which is flowing out of the collision. But all of these densities which I'm uh, showing here are uh, well below the uh, nuclear to quark matter transition. So all of this is actually uh, nuclear matter. So you don't, you don't produce significant amounts of quark matter, uh, except in the cases where you then finally collapse into a black hole in which but they, also in that case, you, you don't get a significant amount of quark matter outside the horizon. But okay, that was everything I wanted to discuss, so I will just conclude. I hope I convinced you that gauge gravity duality combined with, uh, possibly combined with other approaches is useful to study dense QCD. And D, this D3, D7 and B2CD models predict strong first of order nuclear to quark matter phase transition, which means that they are, the neutron stars do not have quark matter cores. And I discussed quite a bit of this VQCD approach, which in many, in which many details work actually really well. So you were able to get a precise fit of lattice thermodynamics at small densities. And then when you extrapolate it to finite densities, you got reasonable equation of state actually at all temperatures and gain couple density. And as I should stress, this gives a simultaneous model for both nuclear and quark matter, and in particular the nuclear to quark matter transition. And then another thing which worked was that the 
nuclear matter equation of state was stiff, so the speed of sound went well above the conformal value. And this helped help us to, uh, to construct this hybrid equation of state which uh, passed all, uh, all known bounds. And using this hybrid equation of state, we, used, we simulated these uh, mergers of holographic neutron stars and pre uh, uh, derived predictions for gravitational spectrum in such uh, mergers. Which, uh, this is a new connection between holography and experiment. I should advertise that there is an ongoing work on transporting dense matter, dense port matter using this D3D7 and EQC model, which will appear very soon. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Any questions, please? Uh, I have a question. Uh, hi, Mati. Um, hi. Uh, I wanted to know whether the codes you're using for simulating the neutron stars allow differential uh, rotation. Uh, for the mergers, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, fully general for the, for the uh, uh, gravity plus hydro simulation. So there is a differential relation included. We haven't really analyzed how it works, but uh, it's included. Uh, do you expect that uh, viscosity and other factors would uh, affect substantially this part, which seems to be important in late times? So this, uh, this has been studied. Um, well, m m m well, if there are viscosity effects, most, most likely they are not like microscopic viscosities, but so like generated viscosities from the, the dynamics. But um, the claim is that it's only the bulk viscosity which might be important in, in the dynamics right after the merger because you have this, what happens is that you have these two different cores of for coming down from the neutron stars that they come together and they have sort of like very fierce oscillation. So in this phase, bulk viscosity may be important. This is not included in our simulation. Okay, but probably it's a, what we have is a good to a zero to the approximation. Okay, thank you. More questions, please. It seems that it is currently quite difficult to uh, prove or disprove the existence of uh, or non-existence of quark core uh, in the in the neutron star. Can you somehow um, guess? Uh, because you consider, as, as far as I understand, you consider. Uh, uh, you have many parameters of, in holographic approach. Mm. Is, is in some sense uh, 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 which part of this parameter space corresponds to existence or non-existence of a uh, quark core? Is it is, is it likely to exist in holographic approach or not very likely? As far as I understood, in the merge in the merge, there is no uh, quark matter produced. But what also about quark core uh, cores? Can you can you give some hints about that? Yeah, so in in none of the models which have been like able to do a really realistic looking simulate realistic looking equation of state from holography, uh, in none of these models there there are stable stable quark cores. So by using the VQCD framework, which I uh, talk about a lot, um, all of the equation of states are actually very far from having for stable quark matter cores. So the transition from nuclear matter to quark matter is so strong that whenever you reach it, the star becomes immediately unstable. Mm, but there, there are claims in the literature that you could, that you should have quark matter cores appearing in the most massive nu neutron star. Just by these claims are just based on uh, analyzing the equation of the properties of equation of state or this polytropic interpolation and setting some re regularities uh, requirements to them. But what we are having here, or what we are producing in VQCD is sort of a opposite uh, result. We never obtain quark matter cores, but we, we sort of, we are still able to pass all uh, bounds 
But on the other hand, what the equation of state which we have is a little bit extreme when you compare it to the approach of these uh, like the other people which are analyzing this. That's by using interpolation. Okay, so 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 holography is is at odds, right, with quark. So well, they, mm, <laughs> at least yeah. this at least T3, T7, V2C, the models for four. The Wittgenstein Suki model in that model. Mm, Usually, the nuclear nuclear to fork matter transition is much uh, uh, weaker. Oh, yeah. So this hints that there could be fork matter cores in this model, but I, uh, no one has been able to come up with a like a, a, a phenomenologically feasible yeah, yeah. <laughs> computation. So it's it, it, it's a it's a novel, of course, uh, phenomenological aspect of holography, but it seems quite difficult. If if ever possible to test it experimentally, probably. Yeah. Okay. Mm. There is some hope that you could uh, get a, s a signal from these events mm. where you have a, a gravitational collapse to a black hole, mm. which would indicate that it was due to a phase transition to form okay. matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe something can be said, but uh, maybe not very much. Okay. Thank you. Mm. More questions, please. If there is no questions, let me ask one. As I and please tell me if I understand correctly, uh, you consider it mainly the merging of two stars which have approximately the same masses. Do you expect some specific feature when uh, the mass of one star is essentially bigger as compared to another one? This is, could be similar as a uh, collision of uh, ions, uh, which uh, can be considered non-symmetrical. One is a bigger, one that is not so big. Okay. Mm, yeah. Tell me. yeah, so the, the results are much more sensitive to the total mass than the mass ratio, ah. but there is, some, there is some effect. We haven't been, been doing simulations with uh, different, uh, like non-trivial mass ratios, but other people have been doing this. And you do see some effects on the, say, post merger frequency spectrum, which you get from gravitational waves. But uh, mostly you need to, to go to quite high asymmetry to get a really drastic signal. Also because of this, the, um, from the, in particular, this first observation, which they did at the LIGO, well, they didn't observe any post merger signal, but even from the in-spiral in part, um, they are they're not able to determine the mass ratios very precisely. But the, there is a, this total mass, or actually the, it's the chirp mass, which they observe at very high precision. It's a certain combination of the mass. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. More questions, please? I think there is a question from Paolo. Uh, uh, if I understand correctly, you do not uh, take into account the influence of the magnetic field or anisotropy in the holographic model. Uh, is it possible? Uh, you can do something with the magnetic field, but the thing is that uh, the effect of the magnetic field well, at least for isolated neutron star, it's uh, it's known that it's quite small, and I expect that this is also the case in the neutron star merger. So the generated that magnetic fields, in principle, should be taken into account, but I expect that they don't really have a large large effect on the on the oh. uh, simulation. But and with the anisotropy, you probably do you mean like the anisotropy of the isolated star? Because oh. there, in principle. No, an isotropy uh, in the holographic model for different directions, uh, for example. Yeah, yeah. So we we haven't considered anything like uh, an isotropy in this setup, uh, or in, I, anything which I discussed didn't discuss the anisotropy. There is some works in the literature, but uh, um, yeah, this is this was as as human that everything is isotropic as for isolated neutron stars, uh, but. Yeah, I don't know if it, it, it that might be actually a bigger effect if, if it's present than the magnetic uh, field. 
but uh, anyways, we are now doing sort of a zero to order approximation in any case. So, so this may, maybe one should look at this in the future. Thank you. Okay, more questions, please. Misha, maybe there are some questions on the chat. Hmm? Not that I can see, no. No. Okay, if there is no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much Thanks. for your very nice presentation. This is the real physics, so it was very nice to listen to the talk. Thank you very much.